Hey y'all, I'm back with another video. Okay, okay. Hey, it's your girl LV Johnson. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload a video. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a giveaway. If you haven't watched my video from yesterday, it will be yesterday from this video. But if you haven't watched my video, the video, um, the Valentine's Day video, please go watch it to find out how you can enter the giveaway. I'll be doing a giveaway at the end of the month. Go watch that video to find out how you can enter to win the giveaway. I will be choosing 10 subscribers, so you must subscribe. I will be choosing 10 subscribers to bless at the end of this month just to show that my love for y'all to say thank y'all for watching my channel and just to pretty much like i said just to show how much i love y'all god have given me permission to do this giveaway <clears throat> to have, have given me permission to do this do this giveaway and i'm so excited about it so go watch that video it's the video what is love and find out how to enter the giveaway so you can be selected to win the giveaway. And yes, you must be a subscriber to enter the giveaway. Let's get into it today. This video is about what steps to get in, to get in right standing with God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not what it's called. It's five steps to get in right standing with God. Five steps to getting right standing with God. So step number one is give. Number one is to give. Allow God to lead your hand in giving. When you bless others, God will bless you. Receive your answered prayers by giving. So I know a lot of times we believe that, oh, God answer our prayers by just praying or he answered prayers that can't be answered just by praying through fasting. Prayers that can't just be answered by prayer through fasting. But God wants us to give. He wants us to be a you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Stop making a noise. What? 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 Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So, God wants us to. And God answer our prayers by us being a giving hand for him. Using our hands to show him through our giving, through our blessings that we give to others. So, give. That's step one to how to get in right standing with God. Give, 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 give. Step two is pray. Pray. Be in constant prayer. Pray, pray daily. Pray before you do anything to ensure that your plan, that your will, um, that your plan align with God's will. And when God answers your prayers, stand ten toes on that, on that answered prayer, on on God's word. And don't waver. God is not a man, he shall lie. So when God answers your prayer, when he sends you the answer, don't let nobody come into what God told you. Stand ten toes down on it and you stick to that. Don't believe Oh, nah, I don't know God didn't tell you that God told you. Stand on that. Don't allow doubt to come in there. Don't allow the enemy to use your friends to come in your head telling you, nah, that ain't what God said. Stand ten toes on that. Ask God to confirm that answer prayer. Ask him to confirm it again. Ask him to confirm it over and over. You know, God is a God that gets in confirmation so that you, when he give it to you, you won't be, if he just said you one time, is not enough to make you really believe that was God. So ask God for confirmation. But you stand ten toes on that answer prayer. Fast. When God leads you to... Okay, so number three to get in right standing with God is fasting. When God leads you to fast, then fast. Allow God to tell you when and what to fast from. While fasting, be sure to pray, serve, and stay in God's word. So during your fast, God don't want us to just fast. Like God is not stunned what you're not eating. He's not stunned what you're not doing. He's not stunned that. God want to know that 
Fasting, the whole purpose of fasting is to get in right, like it's to get closer to God, to hear God speak, to see God work through your life. But to do those things, it's not that God want to see you starving, God want to see you not eating, God want to see you down, looking broke, looking crazy, looking disgusted, looking just, you know, I got that from uh, Latoya Akia's my broken, disgusted, but not, but he don't want to see you looking bad. He don't want to see you looking sick. He don't want to see you down. God want, want you to still keep yourself up during fasting. He wants you to keep yourself up. He want to see you. If you get hungry, don't, don't, well, let God tell you what to do. I'm going to say that. I ain't going to tell you what not to do. Let God tell you what to do. But, God, what God really want to see is you serving him. He want to see that, he want to see you blessing others during your time of fasting. It's not just about not eating. It's not just about Oh, I'm making this sacrifice. I'm not eating. He want to see you sacrifice your hand and bless somebody else. That's what he want to see. So that goes back with giving. God want to see you sacrificing your hand. He want to see you serving others. He want to see you feeding others. He want to see you doing for others. He want to see you showing his light, allowing his light to shine through you by the blessings that you're being to others. So don't feel like, oh, I, got, I ain't been eating. I'm tired, I'm weak. No, God wants you to continue to live your life. He wants you to continue to do what you got to do, but he wants you to get to get closer to him is by serving him. And by fasting, yes, make that sacrifice of fasting, but during that fast, serve God. And also during that fast, still take care of your business. Don't feel like, oh, I can't go to work. I can't do this. No, he still wants you to take care of your business during that time of fasting. That's something he checked me on myself. But, when you, he still wants you to take care of your business, but serve, 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 serve during your time of fasting. Tithing. Now, let me tell y'all a little background about this. I didn't believe we had a tithe. I really didn't believe that. I thought that's, that's, I, I don't know what I thought. I didn't believe, I didn't feel led to. I felt led to give. I didn't feel led, and I still, and still, I felt led to give, and I still don't feel like, as far as like the ten percent thing. Okay, let me explain exactly what I felt. I didn't know how to word it, but now I got it. I felt we should do it. I felt I didn't feel like it was an obligation that we had to do it. I felt that when you do it, you can give it to whoever you want to give it to. It don't have to be just to the church and i still believe that i still stand on that i don't believe it has to be just to the church but i do believe in giving i do believe if god bless you you bless somebody else i didn't believe in i felt like you can do the 10 percent. i did believe like the 10 percent, but i felt like it wasn't a requirement. I didn't feel like it was a requirement. Like, fasting is not a requirement from God. I felt like that. I felt like it was like something you volunteer to do and you do it when you feel like you need to do it. God convicted me this weekend on that through another YouTuber. Um, I'm not going to say her name. I said in another video later because I don't know her full name. Um, but it's Shannon something. But he convicted me through her this weekend and through her word i was able to be led to what i needed to read to correct my wrong you know i i don't know everything none of us do and only a fool would believe that they are wise and know everything so he convicted me and her word set right in my spirit and now from here on out i will be doing my 10 percent so um yeah so yeah, so time, step number four to get right and right standing with God, tithe, tithe. This, goal, this goes with gifting, except with gifting, you give what you feel led. And with tithing, with tithing, you give 10% of everything you earn, wherever God leads you to send it. So you give 10% of everything you earn, wherever God leads you to send it. It doesn't have to just go to be to the church. Allow God to lead your hand. So 
God will lead, ask God to lead you where he needs your seed to be sown and sow your seed there. Um, yeah, it can be to whoever you feel led to give to. And I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture that I have for that one real quick. And I'm going to go back to the other scriptures that I have. But where the lady, um, the YouTuber, I can't think of her name. Well, she's a lady first before she's a YouTuber. But um, where the lady led me to was with scripture, with Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 to 12. And this convicted me so much, y'all, because I've been going so many years like, I don't have to tithe. I don't have to tithe. I give what I can give. And being that I do bless people in ways that I can, as often as I can, I didn't feel it that I had to give 10% of what I earn every week. So let's get into it. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 to 12 reads, I am the Lord and I don't change. He don't change. You are Jacob's children, and you have not been completely destroyed. But you never obeyed my laws. Even your ancestors stopped following me. Come back to me, and I will come back to you. This is what the Lord All-Powerful said. You say, how can we come back? People should not steal things from God, but you stole things from me. You say, what did, you, what did we steal from you? You should have given me one-tenth of your things. You should have given me special gifts. In this way, your whole nation has stolen things from me. So bad, things are happening to you. The Lord our powerful says, try this test. Bring one-tenth of your things to me. Put them, in the and put them in the treasury. Bring food to my house. Test me. If you do these things, I will surely bless you. Good things will come to you like rain falling from the sky. You will have more than enough of everything. I will not let pests destroy your crops. All your grapevines will produce grapes. This is what the Lord our powerful said. People from other nations will be good to you. You will have a wonderful country. This is what the Lord our powerful said. So that's what God said, y'all. He said, test him. And see, the blessing, and let me tell y'all this little black backstory real quick. Not back to me tell y'all this little story. So I purchased a Bible. Like I, I normally I just look at my um Bible through the Bible app. Because I read my Bible mostly daily. But before I was on YouTube, but I was just read through the Bible app. And the blessing behind me using the Bible app for my Bible, I didn't know the difference from which scriptures was old testament and which scriptures was New Testament. So God led me to purchase the new international version study bible i purchased that over a week ago i purchased that over a week ago let me tell you how the enemy worked though i buy stuff on amazon like any other person on this earth 24 7 i get packages on amazon 24 7 now where i live we have lockers so they put our packages in the locker or my door is right next to the locker. So a lot of times they'll drop my package by the by my front door. Um, or they'll take it to the leasing office and the leasing office will call and we'll go get our packages from there. Packages been coming up missing because they'll leave a whole bunch of packages out. Packages been coming up missing. I don't know if the Amazon people not delivering packages or what, but I've been having a lot of packages like in the last three weeks. I done had like three or four packages to go missing and have to keep calling Amazon. And at this point, Amazon feeling like I'm stealing, like real story. Amazon feeling like I'm stealing, but I don't care. Y'all gonna replace these packages, okay? They gonna, but I purchased a Bible journal. I mean, I purchased a journal to write in for like my prayers, scriptures, things like that. I purchased one. It didn't show up. I purchased another one. And then show up. I'm caught. So after a while, the, box, the journal was only like four or five dollars. So I was like, I'm not gonna keep calling them asking to replace this journal because I don't want them to keep looking at me. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna try, take it as a loss. Whoever taking it, they can have it. It's a blessing to them from me. I ain't called and was gonna know about that package. Uh, then I purchased some more stuff in between that time. Received it. I received all of it. Purchased 
my Bible that God told me to purchase, which was the NIV, which I don't even read the NIV like that, but I see that he's getting me in the NIV for a reason. But the New International Version Study Bible, I purchased that. And when I purchased it, um, they said on Amazon that they was having trouble delivering that package. So I called Amazon and I asked, hey, can y'all try to re-deliver the package on Saturday or can y'all try to re-deliver it? And they said, yes, we're going to try to re-deliver it. We're going to send it on Saturday. So I said, okay, great. The enemy, y'all. I look on there Saturday. It said package is not delivered. A refund is being processed. Y'all know that Walmart and stuff, they don't sell Bibles like that no more. So it's like, the enemy don't want me to have that Bible. So I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to allow the enemy to distract me or to stop me from what God told me to do. I'm going to continue staying in my word with my phone, and I will order the Bible again. They say my refund, I'm going to go ahead and reorder the Bible. But it's funny how it said having trouble delivering. Yeah, that's because the enemy don't want me to have it. But the enemy don't stop no show, and I'm going to get my Bible. That's it. That's all. But yeah, that was just crazy to me. That, that everything, my Bible is not getting here. And my journal for me to write my prayers down in is not getting here. But everything else y'all seen in the enemy. The enemy. He'll try to hold you back. But don't let him stop no show, y'all. So, number five, don't worry. So, number five, five ways. To get the fifth way to get in right standing with God is not to worry. Don't worry about anything and pray about everything. It's not your business how it's gonna get done, it's God's business. So when you take something to God, when you go to God in prayer, when you begin to fast, when you begin to begin to give, when you begin to do whatever God is telling you to do, tithing, whatever it is God is telling you to do, when you do it. Leave that to leave everything else to God. Don't keep worrying about it. Leave it to God. Don't allow doubt. Don't allow the enemy to get in. Don't allow none of that. Leave it to God. What I have learned a lot of times when we started seeing troubles coming over us, when things started looking like weird, when we're not understanding things, that's when God is really working. That's that's when God is really working. The enemy try to distract you and have all these things looking like one thing when really. It's not what it looks seen to be. It's not what it looked like. You believe what you believe. You believe that this God is releasing my blessing. God is sending my blessing to me. I know it may not look like it, but I'm believing that it's happening. It's happening for me. It keeps happening for me. It keeps happening to me. You know, like you got to believe. You got to stand on that. You got to stand on God's promises. You got to stand on God's word. God is a promise keeper. He is not a man that he shall lie to us. God is a promise keeper. He is a way maker. So you stand on God's word and you believe in what God is telling you. Whatever God is telling you, you stand on that and you don't worry about how it's going to get done because it's none of your business. It's God's business on how it's going to get done. If God said he's going to do it, then he's going to do it. You stand on that and that's it. So now we're going to go to Matthew 6. The NIV version. That's why I said I see God keep leading me to the NIV version. I don't really read the NIV version. I read the easy to read version. And I read um, messages. And I sometimes I read ampl amplified version. Um, and I jump between other versions. But, you know, it's rare that I go to the NIV version. But God keep leading me to that. That's what he told me to get my study Bible in. The NIV version. So, let's get into it. It says... Verse 1 through 4 reads, be careful, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Verse 6. 6 in verse 8. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in the in secret will, will reward you. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. 
14 and 15. For if you forgive other people with for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their, for their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. 17 through 22. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and, moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? 25 through 26. Through 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than that? Than they? Can only one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in a fire. Will he not much more clothe you? You of little you of little faith. So don't so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day each day has enough trouble of its own. So when I was telling y'all about fasting and I said, serve during your fasting. God is not worried about what you're not eating. He's not worried about what you're not drinking. God wants to see you serving. I'm going to go into Isaiah 58 and let y'all know where I got that from. So it says, um, number three, and I'm going to give y'all a little backstory behind it too, I guess. So um, I've been fasting. My fast is over with. God has released me from fasting. Thank God. I go into my give y'all my um testimony about my fast at a later date. But um so I was fasting. And with my fast, one day, one of the days in my fast, I had got like I was really hungry. And it had got to the point that I was just like, okay, at this point I'm just like, I'm done. I can't. And I had to talk to God about that. And I had to just like, God, can I please eat something? Like, God, I'm, I'm struggling. And he was like, he gave me permission to eat. And I just kept feeling so bad. Like, ah, oh, dang, I couldn't stick to it. Like, I had already did one fast. And now I was on a three-day water fast. I did a 21-day fast. I completed it. And then I went right into a three-day water fast. I was struggling with that. And, um... And I just, I was struggling, but God, you know, he released me up. He, he, he released me, he released me up or whatever. And he gave me permission to go ahead and eat. And it was just like, you know, fasting is a voluntary thing. It's not something that you are required to do. If you fail your fast, you don't have to stop completely. You just get back on course and you continue to do it. Um, God is not looking at what you're fasting from he's not looking at what oh you're not eating this good i'm proud of you or you're not drinking this good i'm proud of you 
yes, he want to sacrifice. He wants us to sacrifice to him. But what God is really, the whole purpose of the fast is to get closer to God. So God wants to see us to stay in his word. He wants you to continue to be in prayer. But if you get hungry, it's not that he wants you to starve. If you need some crackers, if you need something to eat, go ahead and do it. But get right back and right back to what you was doing. Get right back into the purpose of fasting. People fast and want to rejoice in their fasting. But it's not just about the fasting. It's not just about, oh, I'm not eating. Yeah, good for you. But really the whole purpose of it is to get closer with God. And you don't have to just not, it's not only getting closer to God just by not eating. The, not eating is not what's causing you to get closer to God. But saying God's word during, words during that, during that time, praying, talking to God during that time, serving God during that time, that is what's getting you to um, closer to God. That is what's building your faith. faith. That is what's sending you your blessing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Isaiah 58 reads, Verse 3 through verse 3 through 12 reads, They say we fast to show honor to you. Why don't you see us? We starve our bodies to show honor to you. Why don't you notice us? But God says, you do things to please yourselves on those special days of fasting, and you punish your servants, not your own bodies. You are hungry, but not for food. You are hungry for arguing and fighting, not for bread. You are hungry to hit people with your evil hands. This is not the way to fast. If you want your prayers to be heard in heaven, do you think I want to see people punish their bodies on those days of fasting? Do you think I want people to look sad and bow their heads like dead plants? Do you think I want people to wear mourning clothes and sit in ashes to show their sadness? That is what you do in your days of fasting. Do you think that is what the Lord wants? I will tell you the kind of day I want. A day to set people free. I want a day that you take the burdens off others. I want a day when you set troubled people free and you take the burdens from their shoulders. I want you to, I want you to share your food with the hungry. I want you to find the poor who don't have homes and bring them into your homes. When you see people who have no clothes, give them your clothes. Don't hide from your relatives when they need help. If you do these things, your light will begin to shine like the light of dawn. Then your wounds will heal. Your goodness will walk in front of you and the glory of the Lord will come following behind you. Then you will call the Lord and he will answer you. You will cry out to him and he will say, here I am. Stop causing troubles and putting burdens on people. Stop saying things to hurt people or accusing them of things they didn't do. Feel sorry for hungry people and give them food. Help those who are troubled and satisfy their needs. Then your light will shine in the darkness. You will be like the bright sunshine at noon. The Lord will always lead you and satisfy your needs in dry lands. He will give strength to your bones. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water, like a spring that never goes dry. Your cities have been destroyed for many years, but you will rebuild them and their foundation will last for a long time. You will be called fence fixer and builder of roads and houses. So yeah, that's what God wants. It's not, you know, yes, I'm not, I'm not, not trying to um, turn about it against fasting or stop anybody from fasting, but when you fast, you're supposed to also be serving. I thought fasting was just fasting and praying. That's what I thought it was and being in your word. But now I realize fasting is more than fasting, praying, and being in your word. The most important thing is to be praying, being in your word, talking to God, and serving. It's not about the food that you're not eating. It's not about the drinks you're not drinking. It's about being in your word, serving God's people, living, walk, building that relationship with God, speaking to God. Be taking time out to hear God speak to you. So that's all I have for y'all. Please like, share, and subscribe. Click in the note, uh, click the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. Click in the description box to get my book, A Millennial Woman Walk with God. I love, 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 love y'all. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs>